water. Take me to, to the wall, the water. Take me to the wall, water. The water, the water. Oh, and I love, I love. Jesus, I love Jesus, I love, I love Jesus, yes I do, none but, none but the right, the righteous, None but the right Charles but the right shall Yeah. He my Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. In obedience to the divine command of our Lord and Savior, yes. and upon the confession of faith in him as Lord, we do not baptize in the name of the Father, yeah, and of the Son, yeah, yeah. and of the Holy Ghost. He will save you. He will save you. He will save, save you. Yes, he will. In obedience to the divine command of Jesus Christ and upon the confession of faith in him as Lord and Savior, we do not baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. None. But the right, righteous, none but the right, righteous, none but the right, righteous, shall see. In obedience to the divine command of Jesus Christ 
and upon the confession of faith yes. in him as Lord and Savior, yes. we do now baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son yes. and of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus. Yes, I do. Oh, take me to. Take me to the wall, yeah. Take me to the wall. Take me to the wall, yeah. To be peaceful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let your light shine, shine, shine. Let your light shine, shine. I believe there's someone down in the valley trying. Come on and let your light shine. Come on and let your light shine. Well, I believe there's someone down in the valley trying. Well, it may be your brother, it may be mine. That's why I'm gone. Let my Little light, cause I believe there someone down in the valley trying to get home. Come on and let your light shine. Why don't you let your light shine? Shine. Cause I believe there someone down in the valley trying. Well, it might be your friend, it may be my well. I'm gone. Let my little light. Cause I believe there. Someone down in the valley trying. Oh, just let your light shine. Come on and let your light shine. Church, I believe there's someone down in the valley. Trying. Well, it might be your father, it may be mine. Well, I'm gone. Let my little lie. Cause I believe there someone down in the valley trying. Just let your light shine. Well, just let your light shine. Cause I believe there's someone down in the valley trying. Come on and let your light shine. Well, just let your light shine. Cause I believe there's someone down in the valley trying.
didn't have to stop because I kind of yelled. Amen. Come on, let the church say amen. Uh, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank God for those tonight that demonstrated their faith by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for each and every one of them. Thank God for those of you that are here tonight praying for traveling mercy for those that may be on their way here for those that have tuned in virtually thank God for each and every one of you uh, pray God's continued blessings upon each and every one of you um, with the time we have left um, want to go right back into into our lesson um, maximizing your talents and the last time we were here I, I left off around overcoming um, round about overcoming fear and doubt. And um, in, in, in doing so, when you look at in Matthew ch chapter 25, talking about um, the servants that received the talents, um, the one that, that hid the talent um, from God and didn't do what he was required to do, even after being given, um, um, even after he had been given um, what was sufficient for him to have been able to um, bring more, he went and hid his, and one of the reasons why, because of doubt and fear, he even tried to accuse the Lord um, based on his character. And so it's fear and doubt, as I was mentioning um, the last time we, 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 we stopped on this lesson, and that's one of the things that has crippled us as a people, as a society. That's one thing that has crippled us in general is the fact that we allow fear to hold us hostage. We are terrified when we start to talk about fear. It has kept many of us from our dreams. It has kept many of us from accomplishing what it is we're trying to, it has kept many of us from our goals because of fear. And that's what happened with the one that was given the talent. And the thing that I mentioned about those that was given the talents, because one was given 10, one was given five, and one was given one. And the thing was this here that was, that was so important that we have to make sure we don't miss it. Because God gives us talents and gifts based on our ability. Yeah, y'all missed it. This is, this is the beauty of, of, of what happens when God gives us our talents and our gifts. He gives them to us according to our abilities, and that simply means this. I don't have to do no more than what's required. And the problem with many is that we are all over the place, trying to do everything but the thing that we have been gifted and talented with. And I said it before, I'll just say it again. If you will perfect what God has blessed you with, you will be amazed at what you can accomplish. He only had one talent and all he had to do was get one other talent. That's all, that's all he had to do. But he attacks God based on his character that God didn't realize what he was doing when he gave him that responsibility. And I mentioned on, on week before last, we, we always come up on the tail end because again, fear. Do, do, you, do you all not understand investing? It's not something new. It seems new to us because we're coming in on the tail end. You talk to most people who have a 401k and they think that 401k just started. That has always been a 401k. That has always been investment. And just like I told you all week before last, if you have money in the bank and it ain't making no interest, take it out. Because you can be assured 
that whatever bank you are banking with, I don't care if you have $25 in there, they're making money off of it. I understand something. Nobody is doing anything without making some kind of profit. Nobody. And all, they, all he had to do was take his little one talent and get one other talent, but he allowed fear to overtake him. He allowed the doubt, and he went and buried his talent. The unfaithful servant was not a good steward and was even referred to as a wicked and slothful servant, a false disciple who failed to use the resources and was severely punished. As I mentioned earlier, he attempted to excuse his failure by assaulting the character of his Lord. This may have been what caused him to be afraid, which, which causes his irresponsible actions. Again, when we talk about our talents, when we talk about our gifts, when we talk about being good stewards, we are managers over everything that God has entrusted to us. And again, for those who wasn't here, that means you are to manage your time wisely, you are to manage your money wisely, you are to manage your talents wisely, and anytime you go through a 24-hour day and you say, I didn't have enough time to do the things I needed to do, that's because you did not manage your time wisely enough. And so, if you go back and you look, look back through the 24-hour day, and, and, and recognize where you spent most of your time, I can assure you that it wasn't doing something that it was of great importance. And y'all can say, I spent 12 hours on my job. God knows you have to work. God, God already knows that. But, but this is the thing, because if you're faithful there, God's going to make a way for you with everything else that you need him to make a way with. Again, our faithfulness is not just on Sunday morning when we come to church. Our faithfulness is in all aspects of our life. We are required by God because, again, we are servants of God. God has, been, God has entrusted us with all of these affairs, and we are to manage them wisely. We are to be faithful on our job. I don't care if you work for someone who's not a believer, who's not treating you right. You do right, and let God do the rest. Trust me when I tell you, I'm, te I'm, I'm, I'm telling you as, as a living witness. I, I, I shared this with you all that I had a manager that told me he tried to do everything he could to get me fired. But you want to know what kept me there? My faithfulness to what I was calling, not that job, my faithfulness to God. Because I realized who it was that kept me on my job through COVID, through the slowdowns, and through all of the other things. I, I, I did not waver in my pay, in my time, none of that. And there were people that had worked with me for years that was getting laid off. God is faithful to those that are faithful. And when you do what God has required of you to do with what he has entrusted you with, God will multiply it. God, God doesn't add. You, you, we, we all know that by now. God, God doesn't add. God, God multiplies. The servant that had ten talents, when he went and did what he needed to do, he multiplied it. He got ten more. God multiplies. We have to be faithful. <laughs> If, if there is fear in your life, you have to overcome fear and doubt by trusting in God's provision and guidance, knowing first and foremost that God has not given you the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1.7. 1, 7, 1, 7. God has not given you the spirit of fear. And so, and so you got to know the moment that fear begins to enter your mind, ah, no, the devil is a liar. You can take that back where it come from. God, you, you, know, you know instantly that this is not of God. You don't have to question it. You don't have to doubt it because God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. God has you in your right mind, and so when, when, when fear and doubt come, you, don't got, you, you ain't even got to trust if, if you're still saved or not. God said, that ain't from me. That ain't from, 
this is what I said before. Let me, let me just say this again. We entertain too much stuff. Yeah, that's the word I used last time. I was just being a little more modest. But we entertain too much foolishness sometimes. And sometimes when you don't cut it off immediately, you allow it to fester. That's why some folk bother us all the time. When fear tries to continue to invade your mind, you just say to God, like the Father in Mark chapter 9 said, when he came to Jesus about healing his son, Jesus, Jesus said, how long he's been this way? He said, since birth, do you want him to be healed? And the Father said, I believe, but help my unbelief. In other words, he was simply saying, I believe, but there's some doubt. Uh -oh. yes. And so the father, not, not, not ashamed to say, I'm, 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 I believe, but there's some doubt. Yes. Not, not ashamed, not, not ashamed. He says, help my unbelief. I need my, I need, I need my son healed. And if, I, and if believing is the only way he can be healed, I need you to help my unbelief. And, and we got to be honest with ourselves. I don't care how long you've been coming to church. I don't care how long you've been saved. There are moments and times in our life when fear and doubt will try to creep in. Yeah, no you got to be real with yourself and you got to be real with God. The moment it comes, God, help me here. Help, help me. Help me. Because it's not to say you don't have faith. Fear, fear and faith, as many have said, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't coexist together. Yes, they do. Because we can have faith and have fear. We can have faith and we can doubt. You have to know what to do with it when it comes. They coexist. Ain't no way, ain't, there, there is no way that we are not going to have moments where fear will come or where doubt will come. We're human. That's a part of our human nature. It's what we do with it when we come. The Father says to Jesus, I believe but I'm struggling here. Yeah, yeah. This father saw, and this was what happened to us many times when situations happened in our life. This father saw his son being tormented since he was a child. Do you know what it feels like to be helpless, especially when it comes to your child? I, I've heard people say, I'll die for my children. But, but, but how can you do that when you don't know what to do? Well, he was helpless. And he, says, he says to Jesus, help my, help my unbelief. I need a little help. help, help my, doesn't believe that, doesn't, it doesn't believe that we don't have faith. We have faith, but we're human. And so when we're struggling, when we're struggling, we got to tell God, I need, I need you to help me. I need, I, need, I need you to help me because I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this and sometimes our struggle is because of we're looking at the object of what's in front of us. Our faith is not going anywhere. We just have to exercise it. That simply means you got to use it. You have it. You just got to stretch it. Testing and trials is what God uses to stretch our faith. We may believe, but the question is this, to what extent? Do I just believe because I'm in a place of comfort right now, ain't nothing going on, ain't no trouble, ain't nothing happening, all my family is well? Is that the extent that we believe to? What about beyond that? What about when trouble comes? What about when tragedy comes? What about when you're dealing with trials personally? Can you still trust God then? God allow these things to come to stretch and test our faith. We, we have faith. When the disciples prayed and told Jesus to increase our faith, no, no. I'm going to send a little trouble your way. We're going to stretch. We're going we to increase your faith. That's the, that's, that, that stretches our faith so that we'll know that when we're going through crisis, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that I can trust God 
with whatever the trouble is that I'm going through. Investing for kingdom impact. The two faithful servants doubled their talents by actively investing and working diligently. The faithful servants, true disciples, used their gifts and resources responsibly and were generously rewarded. Little, as I mentioned, becomes much when you put it in the master's hand. But you have to be faithful with what you have. We all should be investing our talents uh, not only for personal gain, but also for the advancement of God's kingdom. Our, our, remember, you got to go back to our first principle. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God. So when we do invest, when we do invest, it's not just for us, but it's also for the building, upbuilding of God's kingdom because it is God who has entrusted us with all of this stuff. That's our money. That's our time. All of God has entrusted it. Our money that we go to work and we make, we make it because God has given us the ability to be able to do so. But God requires that we manage what he's made us managers over well. I say this, I, you know, I had, I had got a little feedback the last time. But let me just say this again. Because the truth, Jesus says, is what sets us free. If we are struggling financially, you need to look at how you have managed your finances. Oh, people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. Because until you manage your finances wisely, you're going to always be lacking. And understand this here. God is not going to give you no more until you are able to handle what he's given you already. I ain't going to do that. He's not. Why do, you think, why, why do you think people are not knocking down your doors to give you loans? Because you have not been faithful with the loans you've had in the past. I'm just saying, this is the truth that sets us free. We have to be faithful. We have to be faithful. We, we, we have to be faithful. When I was younger and a little more foolish, I jacked my credit up bad. Nobody would give me any kind of credit. Nobody. It wasn't until I got myself, because I knew I was messing up, and I couldn't blame nobody else but myself. And so I had to get my affairs in order. And I worked and worked until I did just that. And you know what happened in return? I didn't have to seek out any creditor, not one of them. You know how many times American Express turned me down? Wow. You want to know who was the first one, not, 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 watch this, what, you want to know who was the first one who sent me a credit card? Just sent it. Just sent it. Because they <laughs> You find that hard to believe, huh? I, they must turn me down a hundred times. And I, kept, and, I, and I knew they were going to turn me down, but I just kept doing it anyway because they kept sending the pre-approval thing. <laughs> you know, I, I, didn't real, I didn't realize then that, that's, that's, that's one of the major contributors to my credit. That's what was jacking up my credit score because I kept filling out these pre-approved applications and everything. <laughs> And every time you do so, it, it, it reflects on your credit report and it drops your credit score. Ah. ah. So don't let folks be telling you, about, oh, it's just a soft, it's just a soft pool. It's, it's not going to hurt you. Nah, 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 nah. If you can't give it to me, don't worry about it. Ah. But we have to get 
our, our, our self in order. We have to get, we have to get, I, I said this here to the, the, my, my high school students years ago in the Sunday school class. I said, we're, we're moving into an era where, where everything is going to be done by credit. See, because there, 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 there are those who have to keep the divine. Since, since we're able to do a lot of things they're able to do, they have to find some way to keep us divided. Credit keeps us divided. Because without it, you can't, get, you can't even fill out an application to get an apartment now without them doing a credit check on you. And because of that, you can't file a lawsuit and say they're discriminating. Well, no, you filled out an application. You didn't meet our requirements. Plain and simple. We check your credit. There are some jobs that even check credit now before they hire you. <laughs> because in the eyes of creditors, that shows that you are responsible with your finances. And I mentioned this here on week before last too. If you have a credit card, you don't know how to use it, get rid of it. Because you're going to be in debt for the rest of your life. And if you have a credit card and you're just paying the minimum, you're going to be in debt for the rest of your life. Because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to keep you paying. So that you can never come out Of the hole that you're in. That's why they do that. You got a $5,000 credit balance and they tell you, just send us $40. Yeah. How long is it going to take you to pay off that? Your great-grandchildren probably going to have to finish paying off that loan for you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, Lordy. We should be investing our talents not only in personal gain, but also for the advancement of God's kingdom, encouraging each other. We should all understand the importance as believers of us supporting and fostering the growth of individual talents. We must motivate and encourage one another in their talents. You know, this, this, this is the same, same old thing. We, we've heard it so much. I know many of y'all are getting tired of it. But it ain't going anywhere. Because until we learn how to work together, we are always going to find ourselves on the bottom of the totem pole. That's not being racist. That's just being realistic. Every race of people knows it but us. I was listening to a thing that someone sent me on, on Facebook or something the other day, and this guy was saying that, you all may have heard it, how every race of people try to be like us. He said that we really are the trendsetters. Everybody watch us and try to be like us. But this is where everybody stopped trying to be like us when it comes to unite. It is the one problem that every race of people say we have. Y'all don't know how to unite. And what we don't realize you want to know why other races fear this race of people? Number one, it's because of what we've overcome. There's not one race that can say they have gone through what the black race have gone through and still standing. People fear that. The other thing they fear, and it's the reason why they keep us so divided, is us uniting. Because if you can look at a race of people and see what they have overcome, do you know what would happen if that race of people was to unite? Why do, you think, why do you think the Jewish population who only makes up 2% of America seems as if they run the world? Because they're united. People fear that. Because they know that if we was to ever come together, the impact on this world, not America, the impact we would have on this world. I don't know. I, I don't know, but God knows. I, God knows I wish, I wish we could because we, we, we would be... Listen, 
we would be an invincible race of people. That, that, that has always already been proven be, by, by what we've already come through. That's, that's, that's already been proven. You know, we, we, we I'm, you, listen, I'm, I'm not racist. I, I, just, I just call it as I see it. We, we, we can get fired from our job. We ain't tripping. We ain't taking our life, and we going to get another job. Yeah. But our counterparts lose their job. They lose their mind. Yeah. Because they don't know the struggle. They don't have a clue as to how they're going to move forward from here. We just adjust and keep it moving. That's all we, we adjust and we keep it moving. Because we know what it is to be without. We know what it is to struggle. But we also know what it is to overcome. Uh -huh. We have to encourage one another. We have to encourage, we have to support uh, fostering the growth of individual talents. We have to motivate and encourage one another in their talents. You gotta help, you gotta help somebody else. All of the envy and animosity that we have towards one another because one another make it, we got, we got to get beyond that. We got, we, got to, we got to help one another, encourage one another in their talents, in their gifts, in their dreams, help them to pursue so that they can make it. And when they make it, we, can, we, we all can make it because when one make it, we all make it. We got to stop being the, 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 the lowest percentage of everything that takes place in America. Eternal rewards. Emphasize the ultimate goal of receiving the master's condemnation. A well done, good and faithful servant. That is, that is what we want to hear when we stand before God. That we have done well with what God has given us to manage. We have to be better stewards over all that God has entrusted unto us. And God is not going to give us no more until we are proving ourselves to be worthy with what God has given us. That's the only way we're going to get more. If you want, if you want to, 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 to better your finances, then you have to be better managers of the finances you have now. You have to be faithful with what you need to do right now. And God will give you more. God will bless you with more. But, but, but for, God, for God to give you more and you're not managing what you have now well, then guess what? You're going to lose that too. I, I told y'all, it is, it is, I think, 65, 66% of the people that hit the lottery that's broke now. If you don't know how to use it, you're going to lose it. And so it does, it does, it does us no good for God to bless us in our finances when we don't know how to manage it yet. If we haven't been faithful, we don't, it, it, does, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And, and, and here again, I got some feedback on this here too. You know, we write checks and we know we ain't got nothing in the bank account. And th listen, listen, that, 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 only, that, that, only, that, that only work against us because when we do that and the check bounce, guess what? Now you got a fee on top of what you didn't have. All, we, all we're doing is giving away our money. That's why we got to be wise. That's why, that's why we got to be wise. You know, credit card interest rate, like 29%. Late fees, every time you late, give me $35. And we just give, we just give away our money, like it, like it grow on trees. Mm, you, know, you don't want to add to it. Do, be responsible, do what you need to do when you need to do it. Show yourself to be faithful over what God has entrusted with you. And when you do that, God will reward you with more. Just as he did the two that took their talents and invested, God will reward you with more. Here it is, and I'm done, and I'll ask questions. If, if we don't make preparations to secure our future, we won't have one. If we think for one second that Social Security is going to be around for the rest of our life, we got another thought coming. We have to start taking responsibility and securing our own future. And that means that we need to be a little more wise with how we handle our finances. We have a $100,000 car parked in the front of an apartment. 
Listen, I'm not talking about, and I don't want y'all to get the wrong, I, li listen, listen, I'm just, I'm just telling, I'm just telling you all what I see. Listen, there is nothing wrong with that, but it's backwards. You want to invest in what's going to bring you the most collateral first. Don't you know once you drive that car off the lot, you ain't getting at near as much as you paid for it? The house comes first. That's what has the greatest value. That's your, that, that's your bargaining tool now. Now you got something bargain with. You tell them people, like, well, I got a Mercedes SL500 out there, and y'all, well, good for you. I, I, I don't even have one of those. We have to be, we have to be wise. If, when you can afford it, great. Because God bless us so that we can have nice things. But he doesn't bless us for us to be foolish. And if truth be told, many of us live far beyond our means because we're looking at other people. And we go out and we spend money on stuff that we know we can't afford. And I've earned a lot, the art of living within my means. I don't care what I can afford. I'm saying, I had to tell the realtor, well, you can afford this, listen, either you don't get me what I'm looking for, or I'll get somebody else because you're not the first one that I've been dealing with. And I said, furthermore, if I get hurt on my job, you going to pay the mortgage? <laughs> oh, well, no, no, sir, I have my own mortgage. Then don't tell me what you think I ought to be go and get it. <laughs> Needless to say, I got rid of him, too. <laughs> any questions, any comments, any concerns? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Pastor, a friend of mine came by a few days ago, and uh, he was stating, uh, he's a minister, and he was stating that uh, you have faith, but your faith needs to be increased. And, and I thank you for talking about faith and faithfulness. Because truly, I know it is in the word, and I know it's studying the word, but sometimes I feel that I have more faith for someone else being blessed than myself because I feel that maybe um, I'm not, I don't want to say not worthy, but I'm blessed where I'm at, and I feel that maybe God want me to just continue to praise God and thank God for someone else being blessed or, or going through and, and getting their uh, prayer answered. But I thank you for bringing and talking about faithfulness because I know it's an action and I know it's a, a battle in that when God puts you on your heart for you to do something and you just have to say, Lord, give me the strength so that I do what you have me to do and not be intimidated by things or by people or about circumstances. So thank you for talking about faithfulness. God, God has given us a measure of faith. We have faith. We just have to use it. We just have to use it. We have to exercise it, use it. The more, the more, the more you use it, the greater it becomes. The, great, the greater it comes. That's why I said when, when the disciples said, Lord, increase, my, increase our faith, faith's not going to increase. He's just going to stretch it. He's going to test it. Because the more you use it, the greater your faith becomes. Abraham had to grow into the kind of faith that he had. Go back and read it. Abraham, Ab Abraham, Abraham, let God down on several occasions when it came to his faith, even after God had given him specific instruction. But his faith went down. But by the time it, got, it came to Isaac, by the time it came to Isaac, when they were going up to the mount to offer him as a sacrifice, he says to his servants, me and the lad going up here and offer sacrifice unto the Lord, and we will return. Well, how, how, you, how are you going to return if you're going to offer him outside? Because I have faith enough that if God has given me the son that he's promised me, then he's going to either bring us back down off this mount or he's going to give me another son. That's how you exercise your faith. That whatever, whatever I have, if I lose it, God's going to replace it. Give it back. Any other questions, any comments? I'm getting started. 
Do we have any announcements? Yes. I don't have an announcement, but I have a praise report. I had been asking the church to pray for Kenroy Benjamin. He had a brain surgery a week ago today. Uh, last Thursday, he was brought out of intensive care. He is now in, a, in his uh, regular room. He is talking. He is, like my mama say, the activity of his limbs. And I would ask you to continue to pray for him and his family uh, as he recovers. Thank you. All right. That was the neighbor you was, you was telling me about, right? Okay. Praise God. Thank God for that. Thank, thank God for that. Do we have any other announcements? Anything else pressing? Anything? Any other commentary? Y'all ain't got nothing. All right, we're ready then. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's keep Jesus Family. Family. And prayer up. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Keep Deacon Stafford and his family in prayer. And most of us know his sister, Maureen. And today she is now in hospice. She's in hospice. In hospice. Hospice care. Yes. Let us continue to keep all of our sick and shut in, um, lifted up in prayer, I'm praying that God's will be done, whatever God's will for their life, we're praying that God's will be done. Um, I know that God is a healer, uh, but we want to pray that God's will be done in their life. Also for the bereaved families, let us continue to keep them lifted up in prayer. Again, thank you to each and every one of you for being here tonight and sharing with us. Those of you who have tuned in virtually, thank God for each and every one of you. And again, thank God for our candidates tonight, those who have been baptized. Thank God. Thank God for each and every one of you and pray God's blessings upon each and every one of you as we continue along this journey. Amen. Let us receive our benediction. Father God, we bless, we thank you now for this time and for this opportunity. Thank you for this Bible study hour. Thank you, God, for those who have um, been baptized with water baptism in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. We pray that you continue to order their steps, continue to guide their lives, Heavenly Father. We're praying that you will continue to bless every family, every home that's represented here tonight, those that are tuned in virtually. Bless them as well, Heavenly Father. And we continue to lift up all of our sick and shed in before you, all of the bereaved families, Heavenly Father, you know what they're dealing with, you know what it is they're going through, and you, God, know exactly what they need. And so I pray tonight that you will meet them at the point of their needs. Touch, heal, and deliver strength and comfort. Meet and supply needs according to your riches and glory. God, we pray for traveling mercy as we uh, prepare to depart from this place. Keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, that we may arrive at our destination safely. And as we do, we'll continue to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.